uh, I'm very pleased to be here with you uh, in the beautiful historic city of Hanoi. And I thank uh, the government of our sister nation, Vietnam, for the warm and generous hospitality that has been accorded to my delegation since we arrived here in Vietnam on Sunday. We have had a most rewarding visit so far. Uh, yesterday, we had really fruitful discussions, both with the Vice President, Madame Vo Thing and Xuan, and the Prime Minister, Pham Ming Chin. My, visitor, my visit to Vietnam is intended to deepen the ties between our two countries and our business communities. This is especially following the very successful visit of the Deputy Prime Minister of Vietnam to Nigeria in October 2019, when he came with a good number of businesses to meet with their Nigerian counterparts. It's quite clear from my interactions since we arrived here that there is a great scope for expanding trade and investment opportunities between Nigeria and Vietnam. The volume of trade, as we heard from the minister a few moments ago, between Nigeria and Vietnam is just over $500 million US dollars. And both governments agree that this is quite small given our combined population of over 300 million people with a combined GDP of over 800 billion US dollars. There is certainly scope for even greater economic cooperation. Nigeria remains perhaps the most intuitive place to do business in Africa. Despite the economic slowdown in the aftermath of the pandemic, GDP growth has been positive for the last seven quarters. And although it slowed to 2.3% on a year-to-year -year basis in the third quarter of this year, this was still a 9.7% increase over the second quarter. Apart from being the most populous country in Africa, and you've heard that already, Nigeria also has the continent's largest economy, accounting for over 20% of continental GDP. The Nigerian private sector has undertaken large path-breaking investments in agriculture, in manufacturing, in petrochemicals, in finance, in telecommunications, and the digital economy. In agriculture, an area where Vietnam has done so well, and Vietnam, of course, as you know, is already uh, regarded as perhaps the leading nation for agricultural, for the sale of agricultural product, produce. We not only have a large number of successful commercial farms in Nigeria, which are owned by individuals, but in addition, farms owned by companies are also springing up on almost a daily basis. And we're looking forward to the planned cooperation between Vietnam, Nigeria, and the Food and Agricultural Organization. Now, this will assist us with tried and tested technical skills in agricultural development and also for investments in cashew processing in Nigeria. Earlier today, I was at the Vietnam uh, Agricultural, Agricultural Science uh, Academy, and I was very impressed with what we, were, what, what we saw and all of the experience that the academy has been able to put together. And we are working very closely on how we can cooperate 
to bring some of that expertise for the good of Nigeria. Our climate is practically the same. I was uh, surprised to find that when I arrived here, when we arrived here on Sunday, that uh, this could have been Abuja. It was, the climate is almost exactly the same. So whatever works in Vietnam certainly can work in Nigeria. And we're looking forward to that collaboration, especially in agriculture and, agri and agricultural uh, produce. Perhaps I need not mention uh, already, and I'm sure many here are familiar with investments in the downstream part of the oil and gas industry, such as the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas uh, Company. And at the moment, Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Company is building its seventh train. We have six trains already, and we're on the seventh train at this time. There are, of course, also investments by Dangote and by Boa Groups. These are major Nigerian companies in petroleum refining. We have at the moment, uh, Dangote Industries is about to complete the largest single line uh, industry in the developing world, which will process about 650,000 barrels of oil every single day. But a little known fact is that uh, Toleram, the Toleram Group, a company which is from this region, turned around the LMA Petrochemical Company in Nigeria, which is now a major exporter of urea. So investments in the petrochemical sector, investments in oil and gas are certainly worth pursuing. Similar opportunities are available across all parts of the Nigerian economy. And since we allow a 100% ownership by foreign investors. These opportunities are open to partners that wish to invest in our country. We also allow unconditional remittance of investment capital and profits, as well as tax and duty incentives for all of our investors. There are other incentives, including those that pertain to individual sectors, and we have a detailed a compendium of investment incentives in Nigeria, which is produced by the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission and our tax authority, the Federal Inland Revenue Service. So this detailed compendium has all of the range of incentives that are available to all of our investors. In terms of market viability, Nigeria continues to rank very high our people, as you know, are renowned for being energetic and tech savvy, with over 60% of the population below the age of 25. Between 2015 and last year, six Nigerian tech or tech-based companies have been certified as unicorns. These are companies valued at over 1 billion US dollars each. Nigeria is also home now to over 200 standalone fintech companies, plus a number of fintech solutions offered by banks and mobile network operators as part of their product profile. Between 2014 and 2019, Nigeria's bustling fintech segment raised over 600 million US dollars in funding and attracted a quarter of the almost 500 million US dollars raised by African startups in 2019 alone. Our creative sector, which employs over 4 million people and has, and has a potential to add 2.7 million more people by 2025, is ranked the second largest employer of labor after agriculture. So we are on course to becoming the third largest national market based on, year, based on head count by the year 2050. We are already in Africa the largest financial market with market capitalization in excess of 50 billion US dollars as at the end of last year. 
in the past seven years, we have focused strategically on radically improving infrastructure to facilitate trade and investment, especially power, roads, railways, and broadband connectivity. In the area of development of industrial infrastructure, I think this presents exciting opportunities for both uh, local and foreign investors looking to provide modern facilities for industries such as agribusiness, light manufacturing, construction, oil and gas, especially by way of special economic zones. Nigeria at the moment has 17 operational special economic zones with another four currently under development. 14 of our special economic zones are used for export processing, for large-scale manufacturing, warehousing, logistic services, for tourism, food processing and packaging, and technology development. While three of our special economic zones are focused on oil and gas related activities. We have also placed improving the business environment at the heart of government policy. In the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index, before the series was stopped, we moved up 39 uh, places between 2015 and 2020. And this is largely due to reforms and initiatives introduced by the government. Similarly, we emerged as one of the only two African countries to be named among the top most improved economies in the world by uh, the World Bank. In addition to our domestic market of over 217 million people, Nigeria is the gateway to the rest of Africa, both as a result of our close ties with other African countries, but also because of our membership of the African continental free trade area. And this has created incredible opportunities. Investors in Nigeria will have access to Africa's market of 1.3 billion people and a gross uh, domestic product of 3.4 trillion US dollars using Nigeria as a gateway. So early entrance into Nigeria in terms of trade and investment will surely reap bountiful rewards. So I think that there are huge and promising potentials for collaboration between Nigeria and Vietnam. And as members of the international community, what happens to us, what happens to the rest of the world also happens to us. We have all seen the after effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the supply chain disruptions that were caused. We are also seeing the geopolitical tensions which have negatively impacted so many countries across the world. Climate change is also another problem which is a global problem for all of us. But I believe that even with climate change and the issues that have arisen as a result of climate change, there are investment opportunities that that Vietnam businesses can take advantage of. We are, for example, committed to using more renewable energy, especially solar, um, hydrogen, wind, and uh, many grids. Today, we are already investing in connecting uh, solar power to five million homes and that presents very big opportunities for the manufacture of solar components, of solar panels, the manufacture of batteries and other components for solar power. So these are big opportunities that have presented themselves on account of, uh, on account of climate change. We also strongly believe that there are opportunities that, can, that arise in several other different respects. And we have the potential of green investments in our economic transition plan. So many different green investments, including electric cars, which we have seen uh, are a strength here in Vietnam. And we're also looking at, at how 
investments in the manufacture of electric cars can be done, uh, especially in Nigeria. Before I conclude, uh, let me state my appreciation to the government of Vietnam, as well as the business community of Nigeria and Vietnam for hosting this very important business forum. I thank in particular the Nigerian uh, the, um, uh, the um, chairman of uh, VCCI, as well as the uh, chairman of the Nigeria Vietnam uh, Business uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and, and of, of course uh, the ambassador, the Nigerian ambassador uh, in Vietnam and his team for working assiduously to put this event together. I'm certain that this forum will help to bring about increased trade and investment between Nigeria and Vietnam. And given the spirit of collaboration already shown, I expect that we will see an increased volume of trade and investment between our both countries. Thank you very much for your kind attention.